vocabulary related to operons. So before we do that, I'm just going to give you a little review of what an operon is and how an operon works. So it's a gene regulator. That's what an operon is. And if you watched the Bozeman science video, you know that the, um, the operon, the way that he suggests memorizing it, is with PROG, P-R-O-G. Now, the thing is, the R part is actually not on this operon. The P is here, that's your promoter. The O is your operator, and then the G represents the genes that make whatever um, the for the metabolic pathway. These are genes that are all related to each other. The promoter, if you think of P for promoter and P for oops, polymerase, that is what needs to bind here in order for this reaction to actually happen. So if we imagine our polymerase, I'm going to draw it right here. So let's say this is polymerase. My polymerase, in order for my reaction to go, RNA polymerase has to bind here, and then it would travel along here and copy all these genes. So as long as this pathway is open, it's sort of like zipping up a jacket, this is my anchor, polymerase would bind, and it would travel right along here. The operator here is the switch, O for operator, and this is my switch. I don't want to copy these genes and produce a product that I don't need. So what I will do is my, at another site called the regulatory site, and there's your R, the regulatory site makes a protein called the repressor. And it's constantly making this. There's no switch to turn this off and on. So if the repressor's being made and the repressor protein binds here, now my polymerase is blocked. So this switch is turned off. If this protein is pulled off for some reason, now this is turned on. The only difference between the two types of operons is when they're off and when they're on. If it is an inducible operon, that means it's usually off, but it can be induced. That means that typically the repressor protein that's being made is here already. But, for example, let's say this is an operon to digest lactose, and all of a sudden the bacteria comes in contact with lactose. One of those lactoses comes over here and binds to the protein, and boom, it changes shape and gets removed, and now the genes are all turned on to digest lactose. As the lactose gets removed, this goes back. A repressible operon is the opposite. It's an operon that is usually building something, making something, like tryptophan. It's an amino acid that the bacteria need all the time. So typically, what's gonna happen in this case is the repressor protein's being made, but the repressor protein's not the right shape. So even though it's here and it's floating around, this is in the on position. What's gonna turn it off? Well, if it starts to make too much of this product, this little, the product will attach, that will cause the protein to bind, and now negative feedback, this is turned off until that's used up. Okay, so that's a really quick thing about operons. Okay, so the type of operon that builds something, that's going to be one that's normally on. You're only going to turn it off when you don't need it. So that's going to be called a repressible operon. It's usually on, but it can be turned off. The switch, that was our operator. Um, when a methyl group is added to a DNA, that's called methylation. Look in the notes. That's something eukaryotes do. You need to know that. What makes the repressor? The regulatory site. Uh, where does the polymerase bind? It binds to the promoter operon that breaks something down it's only it's inducible it's usually going to be off and it'll get turned on uh, blocking transcription is the repressor and then tightly bound or tightly wound dna is heterochromatin and unwound is euchromatin again these are in eukaryotes you need to look at your notes so that you can see that i even showed you guys chromosomes a long time ago you may remember uh, and the darker bands those were heterochromatin and the lighter areas were euchromatin where it was unwound so that's it.